Hello guys and welcome to a new Stone Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have you a first look at the 4th Munte, a new division available in the Black Sunday DLC for Steel Division 2. If you'd like to read the description on the right hand side feel free to pause the video and take a look. But I'm going to be jumping straight on in and as usual what we're going to be doing is going through all of the tabs, looking at the new units available and then putting together a division. So let's start off in the Recon tab. So first of all we have the good old Moto Metraliera. This thing is pretty standard, talked about it many times already. Uh, the very good very high stealth or very good stealth and the very high optics just to reiterate um, allows them to be strong like frontline radios um, but will get spotted in light cover by other recon otherwise they can remain hidden in light cover relatively well. Uh, then we have the Lunatist. These are your standard sniper squads, the two-man sniper squads. Uh, you've got two, four, and six available through A, B, and C. No exciting transports this time around. Uh, just the Tatra, the normal Tatra, as opposed to the one with like the cool AT gun on the back. Um, but yeah, I would recommend bringing them in with the motorcycles. That's the fastest uh, vehicle if you want to bring them. Then there's the uh, 259. Seen it before many times. Good old 20 mil armored car. Then we got the Vunetore uh, Cecitare. These guys are five man sniper teams uh, with radio which is pretty nice. You get three of them in phase A. This is a pretty nice squad uh, for recon purposes. Uh, Ten points more than your standard sniper squad but for two snipers and still exceptional stealth pretty damn nice. Good old elite mountain troops. Then we got uh, five cards of Kalari. I have mentioned how these guys are decent before. Uh, they have uh, two submachine guns, the sniper, and seven upgraded rifles. Uh, they are still bolt action, but they're slightly better than normal bolt action rifles, like the lowest tier. They're slightly better than the lowest tier rifles, and um, they have a Panzerfaust as well. So at sort of like the 500 meter range, these things can put out some serious firepower. Um, they are very low on availability though and very expensive, which uh, kind of puts a bit of, a bit of a downer on them, honestly. Uh, if we jump over to the infantry tab, let's see what's here. Recruiter. These guys are standard 10-man disheartened squads, uh, but they do have machine guns, which actually makes them a lot better uh, than standard Erzatruppen for like line infantry that can kind of keep the attention of the enemy. Um, as a stop though are quite nice because they only engage at 500 meters which means they tend to apply more damage with their rifles uh, but uh, I, these can be useful for their like purpose of just slowing down the enemy with absolute spam uh, then we got the infanterist these guys are 10 man squads with a submachine gun eight rifles and a machine gun and the machine gun is uh, move and shoot, so it allows you to fire on the move, which is quite useful. Uh, can be pretty decent at mid-range. For 20 points, this is an okay squad. Nothing super special about it, but decent price and availability, so can't complain. You can also get an Infanteriste um, with the Panzerfaust as well. Uh, then we have... Next up, the Detsunuzi. These guys are a 15-man squad with uh, just rifles and then Molotovs. So pretty good squad, actually. Like 15-man squads with Molotovs are nice, but I'm not sure if their rifles will really like follow up on the damage they do with the Molotovs. So they would be nice, I guess, for using with other units that can apply the damage. Uh, so maybe like a, a closer submachine gun squad like alongside them would be quite nice. Then we have the Infanteria uh, Leader. These guys have two submachine guns, two rifles, you get three of them. No smokes is unfortunate. Otherwise these would be maybe a little bit better. You do have a get the Mountain Group leaders, the Pianeri. These guys, three 
submachine guns, a sniper, a rifle, and the Sturmpistole. The, that thing has heat rounds, well, heat grenades, I guess. It can fire at enemy vehicles, which is quite cool. As the uh, 180 millimeter penetration and 120 meter range. Um, accuracy is pretty damn decent as well. So you're not necessarily going to miss with that thing. Um, yeah, cool little weapon there. You can see it on this guy's back. Yeah, I, I think for 25 points, this squad's pretty decent. Uh, then we have the VM Pioneri. These guys have three submachine guns, five rifles, MD-34, and the HE grenade. So stack one of these, for example, with the Detsunuzi, and uh, I think you'll have a nice combination going there. Uh, there's also the VM Pioneri Assault. These guys have four submachine guns and then the Flammenwerfer. Unfortunately, they're not that good. Uh, I kind of wish they had more men and were more in line with something like a Stamaviki Rock squad. Uh, unfortunately, they just don't seem to be worth it. It's very similar to Stern Pioneers, something like that. And I guess, I guess maybe they might work well with the Detsunutsi. I'm not sure. Not sure. Maybe they need. I need to try them out. Then we have the Funitore uh, de Monte. Um, these guys have two submachine guns, eight rifles, and two MG34s. The fact they have two MG34s makes them quite nasty to deal with at range. And you get a reasonable availability on the card. For 30 points though, are they as good as Panzergrens, which are the same price? Uh, not convinced. Because MG42s, are, I think, are better than MG34s. So, yeah, I I'm I'm not convinced that these are really worth their, their value. But you can get the same squads with Panzerfaust as well, if you want to try them out. I guess the 12-man squad does make them a little bit better, maybe, than... Panzergrenz, that would be the only reason that they are. Uh, so maybe better at the mid-range. Then we have the VM Leader, which is uh, one submachine gun, three rifles, sniper, and Panzer Shrek. Now the fact they have a Panzer Shrek is really nice. Also, I guess they have a sniper as well. Uh, but you got to make sure you choose which one you want to use because it's just going to reveal itself at range very easily unless you have it on return fire. Very expensive leaders as well. Especially compared to the VM Pioneeri. So, yeah. I think for Phase A, these would definitely be preferable. You have a lot of one point cards in the ta infantry tab here. So, I think there might be an opportunity to squeeze in two leaders in the infantry tab. Tank tab, we've got the R 35s, classic Renault tanks uh, with the 37mm uh, AP and HE shells. Only have one machine gun. The damage from the HE shower is terrible, so pretty poor support tanks. But I guess the 40 mils of frontal armor is a pain to get through with the AT rifles. So I guess it could just be like a stalwart defensive um, defensive tank, but probably not going to use them too much. You can also get the Commander um, variants as well with the Romanian flag on the back there. Get some German Panzer IVs, the Panzer IV H, classic 135mm penetration, only available from B and C, and the Panzer Führer as well, available from B. In Phase A, you're reliant on your light tanks, and then Phase B, uh, the German cavalry arrives. All right, support tab. We have the Aruncator de Flacari. These guys have the well, are the two-man flamer squads. Uh, nothing particularly special about them. Seen them many times before, like standard two-man flamers. You've got the gendarmi. Uh, these are your military police. I mentioned them like a few times or a couple of times, I guess, already. Um, I think they're good, but they lack availability uh, in order to be effective. Yeah, it's a shame um, because I think I'd probably try and fit these into some decks. Then we have the Schwalosa. Uh, this is standard Schwalos uh, machine gun, 1,200 meter range. You've got the MG34 squads available with the 1,500 meter range, which is quite nice. 
These could be actually really useful to supplement your infantry in the early game. I just to uh, go with them. There's also access to the Flampanzer B2. Now oh, this is an old boy. Um, <laughs> it's a cool tank. Unfortunately, probably not going to ever be used or ever be useful. It's a nice flavor tank vehicle thing, but I don't know. <laughs> it's 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 a shame that it's like probably never going to be used or never be useful. We've got the uh, Breda AC 47 mil infantry gun available again. These things are great with the really high rate of fire. So definitely worth using these. Then we have the uh, Ford trucks for supply. There's also the Hotchkiss machine gun available. And then you've got the leaders. So the VM Commandant. I like their like berets. I think they look really cool. Again, the outfits and the textures of the Romanian troops throughout this entire DLC is just amazing. And I like the way they've gone through and, and painted all of the um, insignias on the different camos as well, like on the on the vehicles. It's really cool. Uh, you got the Phase B Tatra and then the Phase C motorcycle. Not sure why you'd ever want the motorcycle in Phase C, honestly. All right, anti tank. Do you get cards of Panzer Treks? And I think Panzer Treks are going to be super important in this division, just because you don't really have much to deal with heavy armor in general. So ambushing heavy armor is going to be your primary way of killing it. Um, aside from using your aircraft, probably. Um, then you've got the uh, Vuna Torol Dicare. This is just a Renault with the 45mm gun in it. I think it's the Russian 45mm. It does have reasonable rate of fire, like 12 round per minute. Base is okay. But the fact it only goes 23 km per hour off road and 30 km per hour on road is trash and its base accuracy is really low. So you're going to want to be close and you're not getting close anytime soon. Its armor is not that great, it's just a slow vehicle. It's, it's kind of cool, it's nice flavor, it might be able to like transport snipe in the early game. But eh, there are better things for it. We've got a pack 9738 here. Uh, this has the uh, standard heat shells, AP shells. We've seen this gun before. It can be used nicely as like infantry support that does have AP and, uh, and like, I guess, medium tank killing potential. But the accuracy on its heat shell is like 15%. Even with veterancy, that barely changes. Goes up by like 8% per veterancy, which is awful so yeah not a reliable AT gun at all but yeah <laughs> maybe a bit of a hybrid support gun and right, now we have some Vunatore de Care these guys have the five submachine guns and the two rifles three HE grenades and the Panzer Shrek seen these in another of the divisions seven man squad very expensive limited availability F4 is okay on the card, but yeah, I think um, these are good, but you definitely need to make sure you're supporting other troops with them in order to get a, like a decent value out of them. Pack 38 is available with a remaining crew, which is pretty cool. And then you got the Marda 2s coming in to support the Romanians. These are Germans. And then you've got a Romanian manned Pack 40 as well. Uh, no crazy nice transports or anything. And it's just like the RSO tractor. We've seen that before behind it. Yeah. Get some nice AT guns here, I guess, uh, to back up the Panzerstrex. Anti-air. Anti-air is limited here. You get the Hotchkiss truck. Probably going to be like one of your best AA pieces in phase A. Uh, but you can get the 20 mils, so probably going to choose them over the Hotchkiss and just use the Hotchkiss as a transport vehicle, which you can do in the Romanian divisions, which is quite nice. There is a card of uh, mobile wagons, but they're only available in Phase B, so that pretty much uh, decides that for you. And then you've got the uh, Vickers Long Range Anti-Air again, uh, which you'll probably just bring in in Phase C. But up to you. Maybe you want them in, in the early game. Honestly, like 
an anti-air piece like this in the early game can actually make a lot of difference to things like fighter bombers in the early game. Like, um, if, if somebody is using fighter bombers right from the start and you have one of these on the field, it'll pretty much make their aircraft ineffective. And that can be really, really handy. As long as there's not a lot blocking your line of sight. Our artillery tab, let's have a look. We got the artillery, the OBS artillery. Um, these guys are your standard um, sort of artillery recon, the exceptional stealth and very high optics with radios. Then you got the um, the leader artillery. This guy is a standard 10 man squad. He's nothing super special about these. Get 60 mil mortars again with the Romanians. Uh, there's 81 mil mortars and there's also 120 mil mortars. Then we have some other guns in here as well. We've got the OB M1897, um, M1897 uh, the 75mm gun from World War I. It, um, it's okay as like a direct fire support gun, but not, I don't know if it would be good as like a long range artillery. You do get a reasonable availability of them though. Like four on a card, 50 points. With the uh, three damage, I guess it's not too bad. Uh, 3.75 damage. Actually does less damage than the 81mm mortar though, so never mind. Yeah, you got some those 81mm mortars, probably better to choose. All right, there's also the uh, M1913, the 105mm uh, gun. Again, another World War One gun. Schneider 105. These things are actually quite good. And the fact you can get three of them in phase A is really nice. I really like these in the 25th Panzergrenz. I think they're pretty strong. So worth checking out. Uh, you can also get the OB M1934. These guys are 100mm guns, 5 damage. Similar to the M1913. The main difference being rate of fire. A little bit extra rate of fire on the 100 mil compared to the 105. But the 105 does more damage and has better blast, which means it hits like a larger area. Okay, there's also cards of Vespa and the, uh, the Hummel as well. So those are two decent artillery pieces. The Vespa, maybe not so much actually, but the Hummel, definitely a strong choice. Okay, air tab. Got some Romanian Blenheims. Very nice. Recon Blenheims. Not particularly fast though for recon. 450 km per hour speed. And the resilience is only medium. Do get three of them in phase A though. Uh, JU87 D3s are available in phase A. For 65 points, it's actually a steal uh, because the 250 kilogram bombs more than good enough for taking out individual infantry squads that are small infantry squads and also support weapons so this is a nice card especially in phase a get six in b and uh, nine in c hs129 b2 r5 with a very interesting camo as a recon hs129 uh, doesn't really have much in the way of fire support i mean it has two frontal machine guns and two frontal 20 mils but <laughs> yeah good luck using them with bad agility we do have a card of the IAR81C. Uh, these have two 20 mils and two 30 cows. So they're missing out on two 30 cows compared to the other IIR, IARs we've seen before. They're a little bit weaker in firepower, but still relatively decent for their price. There's also the IAR81C, another Romanian fighter uh, with the bombs this time. Uh, the 50 kilogram bombs. This payload's a bit trash. Two 50 kilogram bombs is never really going to do that much, so bear that in mind. Uh, probably won't be enough to kill a support weapon in one run. But I guess um, maybe if you use these like in tandem to kill things, that might work. And then you can also use them as fighters straight after to counter enemy fighters that might go for you. Could be worth doing. All right, then we see the uh, JRS. Uh, 
79 bombers. These come with 18 50 kilogram bombs. The payload's not very good. Um, it will pin down an area for you, but not for very long, and it won't really do any damage. So I don't think these are worth bringing. Very low availability on the card. Not a fan. ME109 G2s, the classic 20 mil um, in the nose and the two machine guns. Not a very strong aircraft. Uh, it, does, it does fly very fast, but it struggles to shoot things down because it has low firepower. So it ends up overshooting um, in terms of speed past its target. And that means that it doesn't end up getting the kill, which is unfortunate. Good uh, maybe taking on other fighters, but not so much um, enemy um, support aircraft. So might be worth taking just because it's the only other fighter here. But I think the IAR might be a better choice just because it's much cheaper. Then again, the the speed of the IAR-81 um, is a problem for catching up to certain attack aircraft. We do also have the uh, JRS-79B with napalm bombs. Not sure how effective these napalm bombs are, but I think they are the bad napalm bombs. They sort of leave a bigger splash of um, napalm on the floor per bomb, but they don't spread as much as the standard smaller napalm bombs, which you get more of. Um, so that kind of makes them less reliable than say, like an IL-2 napalm bomber. After that, the HS-129B2R2. This thing has a 30mm gun underneath it. Good for shooting enemy tanks. In terms of availability, just one in phase A, two in B, and four in C. Not the best aircraft in the world. I think this is probably too expensive for what it offers because they're so damn slow. So you see this coming in. By the time you've actually lined it up to get like side shots, which you're going to need to get the kill in the first place, it's probably something flying towards you to come and shoot you down and the 340 km per hour speed is not good enough to deal with that especially with bad agility to boot so yeah it's not great um the ace though he flies this thing and uh maybe because he's an ace he'll do that much better but unfortunately just cosmetic in this case um and more likely to get you shot down because they see a nice shiny ace in the sky that they want to get or they want to shoot down with their fighters Right, finally, we got some really interesting aircraft here. These are old Polish bombers. I learned this on stream recently. Um, the first one has quite a nice payload of 50, 30, or 32 50 kilogram bombs. Not a huge fan of 50 kilogram bombs, but when there's 32 of them, that makes a bit more of a difference because it allows for a larger spread and, um, well, a larger spread of like, carpet bombing, but also a longer time until the enemy units recover because there's more bombs going off near them, which means they get suppressed more, um, as opposed to something like the JRS, which only has 18. It's like almost half. Um, yeah, it doesn't last as long. It doesn't have as much of an effectiveness. But this thing is slow. Its agility is worst, which is like the worst, <laughs> literally the worst. And... Um, the resilience is medium so resilience isn't great it's slow and it can't turn so <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know if these are worth bringing this payload however might make it worth bringing because 20 110 kilogram bombs might do quite a bit of damage but the availability on the card kind of lets this down because i don't know only bringing one in phase a is yeah not very good, not very good. You could kind of cheese with like the Blenheim bomber at the start. I don't know if that would be worth doing. Either way, an interesting looking aircraft with chonky wings, that's for sure. <laughs> and a very cool camo, as always. Really lovely job on the textures in this DLC. Love it. Right, let's put a deck together, starting in the recon tab. So I definitely want these guys. The Punatori Tititari. These guys are very nice value sniper squads. 
I think I'm going to want the STKFZ250 um, 9s. I'm not sure if I need the Calari because the Funatare Chechitare are so good for the long range sniper support. I think I'm just going to bring in like a bunch of these guys. Maybe one of these, like in phase C, for example, when you can get a lot of them. That's one thing we need to decide, actually. Looking at this deck, we get a lot of stuff in phase B, right, from the Germans. We could probably make something like a Maverick division out of this, which would be pretty cool. Which would kind of, I guess, fit the theme of the deck. But overall, I think maybe a flat line would be better. Either a flat line or a balanced. There's not really any like decent planes that are really going to like help you in the late game. There's no real strong artillery that's going to help you in the late game. Maybe the Hummels. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't want to go Maverick just because it gives you the least amount of points over a 40 minute or 30 minute game. Um, but I don't know, maybe balance is just better. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it on balance and we'll build it and then I might change it if it looks to be something a bit different. So we're bringing a unit of Kalari in phase C. Actually, no, tell you what we're going to do. We're just going to bring in another unit of phase in phase A. Stack up on those snipers in phase A. I think that's a good shout. Okay, infantry tab. There's a lot to choose here. The first thing we need to do, or well, first thing I'm going to do, is probably choose these guys in phase A for my leaders and we'll put another card of leaders in phase B. Uh, I'm not sure if I want the Infanterist. I'm really not sure. Um, probably best to put the more elite troops in first and then see what's up. So the Venatore de Monte, I'm not sure Again, if these are worth it, I, there's so I'm not I'm struggling with this deck because it should be good, but the infant like in the infantry like kind of looks good on paper, but I don't know. I feel like I'm gonna have to try this out quite a bit. I'm gonna be maybe be making a lot of changes to this deck. We will get the Detsunotsi in here, and then I'll back them up with some other stuff. The VM Pioneri, probably a good shout. The fact you get 9 of these and then 15 in Phase B is really good for like a Pioneri squad. So, I'm probably going to bring these in Phase A. You get 27 in C though. Only one card available of these. Tell you what, we put them in C for now. I'm going to bring in some... VM Pioneer Assault in Phase A to accompany my Detsunutsi. Then we have the Vunatore de Munte. These guys in Phase C might be a good idea to have more of them available. Because we are running balance, so that's fine. They're much better than the Infanterist. Although the Infanterist... At 20 points... Nah, nah, the Venatore de Monte. Way better. 12-man squads with two NB-34s. Okay, yeah, for sure. Does certainly make our infantry tab a lot more expensive. But I think they'll do. So I'm bringing in the Venatore de Monte in phase B alongside the Detsunotsi and then we've got the phase A is going to be the Bunatore de Munta in next to the Pioneri Assault and the Detsunotsi. I probably need one more card in phase A. Maybe the maybe these guys would be worth it. Hmm. We've already got the two leaders so we don't need to look at leaders. I think I might just put these in phase A just to supplement. Yeah. Okay. That's a full re that's a full infantry tab.
but I guess it's kind of what you're supposed to do with this deck. Okay, for the tanks, definitely going to bring in tank leaders in B with um, probably some Panzer IVs available in B and C. Bring them in like extra venerancy just so that I can up bet them to three star venerancy, get a lot of value out of them. Support tab, we can definitely bring in some flamers in phase A. I don't know about machine guns. Definitely need the infantry leader. Supply, I do want the Hummels at least in phase C. I know that much. We definitely want these in phase A. Uh, probably best to bring them with the Ford, not the Famo, because it's way faster. Okay, um, probably not going to need the artillery leader, so this artillery tab might be pretty light for us. Anti-air, definitely bring in mobile wagons in phase C, that's something I know I'm doing, and the Vickers in C. In A, probably going to do Hodgkiss with the 20 miles. I don't know if that's too much AA. Especially considering the last one takes three points. Not sure about that. Oh yeah, one thing that's really bad about this division is you get don't get any of the Reshitsa um, AT guns. Which is one of the best things about the Romanians in the new DLC. Definitely want these. That's for sure. It looks like... I mean, these artillery pieces have a lot of ammo in phase A, don't they? Mm, 30 is actually not as much as I thought it was. Maybe we have to do like A and C supply, which is going to leave me with not much option for AT guns or machine guns, sorry. I do already have the Dead Sinuti and the Pianeri Assault. Maybe I don't need the, the Alan Cato, the Flacari. Hmm. Maybe I could just bring like a card of MD-34s instead. I think that could be a better choice. Gives me a bit more control at range. Okay. So. This tab. We could get some cheap Panzer Treks. Bonatore, Dicare, in phase B maybe. Well, actually, I definitely want pack 38s. So I know that much. And I want the card of pack 40s. The pack 40s, will they be better to bring in B or C? Probably B. Yeah, I think B. Phase C is tempting, but I think it's going to be B. Make sure we bring those in the board trucks, not the tractor. Really want to bring in some Vunatore Dicare, but 40 points, I'm not sure they're worth it. Marders aren't worth it. Let's add to the air tab and then we'll go back. So, kind of want to bring in this, but don't think it's. I don't know. I guess we've got to bring in the ace, right? We've got to do it. Do I do it in phase A? <laughs> oh, this is such a hard choice. I mean, I definitely want these in phase A. The JU87 D3s, although because the availability is like so high in B and C, maybe it's better to bring them later on. It might be better to just field a lot of JU87 D3s. Like as our bombers, rather than like rely on an actual, you know, traditional bomber. Recon aircraft, are they needed? Maybe I could do like recon Blenheims with like one of these in phase A. Maybe. Like, slow down the enemy enough that I can get my units into position really well. Because I think our phase A is going to get hit pretty hard. No, I don't know. I don't think it's worth doing that in this division. Not really going to make much of a difference. Because you do have the fours, which are pretty fast trucks. You're going to get to the front line fast anyway. Hmm. Let's just bring in standard fighters. I think maybe upvetting these a little bit is probably a good idea. 
I'm gonna get one card of those. Yeah, we're bringing the IARs in phase A and then the ME109 G2s with extra veterancy in phase B. And then probably a card of HS129s. Um, A, B, or C. We'll do B. Right, I could add another aircraft. Don't need more HS129s though. Don't need these JRS's, terrible payloads. The PZLs are tempting. Don't need recon aircraft. So I think what I'll do actually is just bring like a card of Bunatore de Care in phase C. That's just going to give us Panzer Shreks for the end of the game, which saves us against like a strong heavy tank push. We leave ourselves like relatively light on the artillery front, but not sure if that really matters. The nice thing about these artillery pieces, they can use radios. Maybe having more of those in phase C wouldn't be a bad idea. Or phase B. It's phase B, we can bring them in, yeah. Because it can be very effective. I just don't know what I'd drop to be able to bring them in. And i got to be wary of the amount of supply that I'm bringing. So, I think I'm just going to leave it at that. 105s will serve me for the first half of the game, and then the Hummels for the second half. I've always, I've noticed a habit that I have with building my divisions where I put too much artillery in that I never purchase, where when I could be using the activation points elsewhere. Uh, so I've started to be more conscious of it because I generally tend to not micro more than say like three artillery pieces at a time. And because uh, it's because it's hard to sort of micro all the stuff on the front line at the same time as, you know, going back and sorting out all your artillery. So yeah, I think this is okay. It's going to be an interesting division to to play out and see how it performs and i'll probably make changes after that but i'm relatively happy with this one compared to like some of the other uh divisions in this dlc i think i'm more confident with this division being relatively well built compared to the others yeah all right well that's where i'm going to leave it for today another long video looking at one of these romanian divisions Overall, very impressed with the divisions in this DLC. Extremely impressed, actually, with the textures of the models in this DLC. And the new models that they have made, like the Matilda one and stuff like that, look really cool. Um, so, yeah. Very, very happy with the DLC in general. And hopefully you guys uh, are looking forward to getting your hands on it, if you haven't already. Uh, but that's it. Yeah. The fourth... Mintier. I think it's going to be a relatively strong division. Might be nice in team games, actually, especially with that artillery tab. Not not particularly in this case and how I've built it, but I think there's potential there for like a strong artillery tab for the team games. Yeah. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Yeah,